Hello, thank you for your interest in A-level history at Altwood Sixth Form. Mr Milne and I, Mr McCallion, will take you through this exciting and rewarding course. So why should someone consider studying history at Altwood? Well, first and foremost, it is a very highly regarded subject uh, at A-level, at university, by employers. If you get a good grade in the history, you will be highly regarded. But you'll also be developing your skills whilst you're working with you. And that starts off this skill of inquiry coming up with the question that's going to help you um, to answer these key questions in history. And through that inquiry, you are going to have to be showing uh, your understanding of evidence. So looking at contemporary evidence from the time, but also what modern historians think of that evidence and what happened. And that means your understanding of bias is going to be key as well. And obviously transferring that to the modern world and spotting where politicians, journalists, come up with bias um, and how you can isolate it is going to be key as well. In fact, all elements of communication, your skills in being able to communicate and to explain, but also communication on social media, uh, on the television, on the radio, are people using those skills effectively enough? We will look at both causation and consequence. So why did something happen? On top of that, with what consequence? That's absolutely vital, especially in the, in the subjects that we're studying here as well. We will also be looking at change and continuity. So not only how do things change, but what stayed the same? What remained themes across these periods that we're actually gonna be looking at? In terms of the higher order skills that we'll be looking at, then both analysis and evaluation are going to be key. And to help you get to those top grades at A-level, your skills in these areas, we will help to develop and they will need to be very good. And that will also be very useful for you in the world of work as you get older as well. So by doing these things, you're going to be able to debate, you're going to be able to argue effectively. And that's one of the reasons that history is so important in any course and in every job as well. So we are teaching you not what to think about things, but actually developing your ability to think how to think and that's crucial again in the modern world with all this misinformation with all this being told what to do told what to say it is absolutely vital that you can think for yourself there have been famous graduates who've uh, qualified from history lots of prime ministers including gordon brown most recently but clement attlee as well labor prime minister after the second world war and three other prime ministers lord co gold medalist founder uh, organizer of the london olympics Supreme Court justices in America. And that brings us on to what careers you can go into with history. Well, I think history is useful in every single career because it tells you or it helps you to understand how to put an argument together, how to look at evidence, then it is vital in so much in law, in journalism, as an author. They're traditional ones that are seen, but also in leadership and management. How are you gonna manage people? How are you gonna use your empathy skills to work out what they're thinking, what they need? In terms of customer service, recruitment, sales, can you identify what someone's needs are and how you can meet those needs? If you want to be an entrepreneur, you've got to spot a gap in the market. So what change can you see? What continuity is going to be there? Politics as well, obviously an absolutely key one. So through studying history, your skills and your employability and your ability to perform effectively as a citizen will all improve, improve greatly. Hello there, Year 11 um, potential historians. Um, here's a quick look at what we are studying in um, A-level history at Altwood. Um, so I'll just give you a quick look at the, uh, the main um, information that you need to go on with. It's uh, two papers and a piece of coursework. It is um, Tudor history, which is over a hundred years period, and Russian history, which is the depth study over a shorter period of time. There is also a piece of coursework on the fall of the Western Roman Empire. Okay, so um, this is the, the main gist of what we're looking at at the moment. In Tudor history, you'll be working with me, Mr. McCallion, but what will we be studying? Well, it is the Brett study, so if it's, it's over a long period of time from 1485 
1603. So 118 years covering all of those Tudor monarchs. We look at continuity and change. So there's lots of change during this period. But you know what? A lot of the themes that come through and a lot of the difficulties faced, actually, we see throughout each monarch's reign. So lots of continuity. We look at why things do change and with what effect. And it is undoubtedly one of the most fascinating um, periods of English history. One of the pieces of history that, that most people are interested in. Everybody thinks they know something about Tudor history. But what we'll be doing is challenging those things that you think you know, developing them, going far, far deeper so that your understanding will be so much greater. We will start by looking at Henry VII in year 12 before moving on to Henry VIII, who forms the biggest bulk of our study in year 12 after Christmas right through to the summer term. We will then move on to his son, his heir to the throne, Edward VI, in the last term of year 12. Um, before studying very briefly, because she was only on the throne for, for a matter of weeks, but Lady Jane Grey, followed by Mary Tudor, uh, whom we pick up at the start of year 13. And finally, of course, the other biggest part of the course is Elizabeth I, whom we study in terms two to four of year 13. And those topics, those themes that we study throughout all of these monarchs, we look at religious change, at the nature of government, at foreign policy, social change, the economy, and also rebellions. So an awful lot for us to get our teeth stuck into. It's not just a case of Henry VIII and his six wives. In fact, one of the things we will study is that by law he didn't have six wives, and we'll try and work out legally how many wives Henry actually had. So what you think you know about the Tudors, you may want to readdress as we study it. In terms of Russian history, it is um, a lot less in terms of the content. Well, it is not, but it's a lot um, less years. It's only 17 to 53. And in um, year 12, it's essentially just 1917 to 29. So really lo not long at all. But lots of things happen. You know, this um, this new system turns up communism that fundamentally changes uh, Russia and, and the world in terms of the kind of ideas that they had and the um, eventual consequences of what happens in Mother Russia. OK, so again, a few pictures for you of the Russian Revolution. That's the first thing we look at is the kind of long terms, medium terms and short term um, causes of the revolution. And then the two revolutions in 1917, that's pretty much um, takes us through into the first term, just looking at this this one big event. Um, and uh, And then finally, guys, we have a very different piece of coursework it is um, the fall of the Western Roman Empire from 376 to 476. So the kind of end of Rome in the West, not in the East. The East, it carries on, turns into what's called by the Byzantine Empire and carries right on for another thousand years. But we, we don't look at that. Um, we look at the, the Western Roman Empire and the attack of people like Attila the Hun, the Visigoths, and you know, what the heck it really was about. There's so many reasons. You can just Google a hundred reasons for a start, but lots of people have written about it in the past. In terms of the examination papers, then both papers are actually very similar in their format. So I'm going to show you the Tudor paper now, but do bear in mind the Russia paper is essentially the same. So when we look at the paper, you can see it's two and a half hours long. All right. So this tells you straight away that this is a decent length of exam paper. Now, sometimes people can think that does sound like a, like a long time, and it is, but it gives you your chance to shine. And if you look at the bottom of the paper here, it does suggest that you spend an hour on the first page, first question, including reading time of the sources, and then 45 minutes on each of the other two questions concerned. So 
So here you see an example of, of the section A question, that first question. You will actually have three sources. You have to read the sources, look at who wrote them, work out what the message is um, and how you can ch both challenge it, but also back it up as well. And the question itself will always start in the same way. Using your understanding of the historical context, assess how convincing the arguments in these three extracts are in relation to, and in this case, it's Henry VII's method of government. OK, you treat each of these sources in its own right and separately. You do not have to compare the sources at all, which makes it slightly easier. But you do have to have that in-depth understanding of the period, being able to both challenge and support the historian, but also a bit of an understanding of the historian themselves and other historians on what they think can be useful in answering this question as well. Section B gives you a choice of answering two out of a choice of three questions. You will see here, actually, that the different topics that I mentioned being covered or the different themes are religion, the succession and government and foreign policy. And also they cover every monarch with the exception of Henry VII, and he was covered in section A. So it really is important that you have that understanding of the full Tudor period from 1485 to 1603. Also, if you look, you will see that only one of the questions only refers to one monarch. So you have to have the detailed understanding of different monarchs so that you're able to answer these questions fully. We will do lots and lots of practice on past questions throughout the two years, but reading is also a key part of the study of history at A level. We will be recommending to you to buy a core textbook for your own so that you can annotate it, make your own notes in there and you've always got it with you. However, we will always make sure that the reading from a really wide range of sources is available for you for every lesson or before the lesson if it's done in advance. So you don't have to buy a textbook, but a lot of our students, the vast majority, find it very, very useful to have their own copy of the textbook. So if you do have any questions at all, then please make sure you book in with Mr. Mild on Thursday the 14th of January um, or you speak with one of us, whether that's by email, um, arranging for a phone call or via Microsoft Teams. We'd be very, very happy to discuss with you if you've got any questions about the subject. We happen to think that the topics that we study here are of great interest and should cover um, whether you are more of a modern historian, um, a, a medieval or um, a post-Enlightenment historian studying the Tudors or an ancient historian studying the Romans. There is something there for you which will put you in a great position to be able to choose what areas of history you want to study as an individual or maybe at university in the future. We know we're biased in terms of our love of history, but what we hope to do is make sure that when you are studying it, you feel that same in interest and that same passion for the subject as well. So do get in touch to ask any questions that you want to.